Today is a big day in the laptop world because a bunch of devices were launched with the new Snapdragon X chip. This is supposedly a very powerful chip with awesome energy efficiency, so like incredible battery life, and these are supposed to be cheaper chips. So to be able to put this type of chip into a laptop makes that whole product come down in price. Okay, I was able to spend a little bit of time with a few of them, and these are some first impressions. I'm gonna start off with some Surface devices. So with the Surface Pro 11 and the Surface Laptop 7, with the laptops having the biggest changes. The screens on both devices are now OLED panels. So the 13.5 inch IPS panel from the previous generation has now been updated to a 13.8 inch OLED panel and the 15 inch panel as well. But they both have much better contrast ratios and viewing angles and just better image quality they would get with OLED tech. And you get thinner bezels, but you also get for the first time that I can think of on a Surface laptop, rounded corners on the display. Now Apple's been doing this on their MacBooks for like over a decade at this point but they only do the top corners, like the top left, top right. This on the Surface laptop here, we're seeing it on all four corners, including the bottom ones. And it's just, I don't know, I like the look. I don't think it's for everyone, but I think it's just like a nice design language that I think goes really well with the overall design of the Surface devices. Uh, the keyboard hasn't really changed other than the inclusion of their Copilot key, which is like their AI button. You press that and it'll do wonderful AI things. That whole conversation of Copilot and the new Copilot Plus, that's a whole, separate conversation that'll come in the future. The trackpads on the Surface laptops have also been updated. They're now a haptic touchpad in the sense that they're no longer like a physical cantilever mechanism that goes up and down. It is now a motor on the inside that simulates the sensation of tapping on that touchpad. And both the 13.8 and 15 inch devices have this change. Another thing, the new Surface laptop seemed a little chonkier than before. It's like the base of the device has a beefier middle segment, which I actually like to see because usually that means better thermals. And I imagine they went with this kind of chonkier design because they wanted to be able to support the highest tier of Snapdragon X chips, like the Snapdragon X Elite that has a slightly higher wattage and they want to be able to run that chip on these new Surface devices. But the interesting thing to me is that for years now, the Surface laptops, when it came to the Intel, chipped versions, those were just barely able to keep up with the heat output of those Intel chips. But they retooled everything for the ARM chips, which to me is like, okay, Microsoft, at least on the hardware level, is very committed or seemingly very committed to actually delivering a good product here because they actually spent all the money and resources to retool this entire product lineup. That's good to hear. Now in terms of ports, you get an extra USB-C on the left side and on the right side is just the Surface Connect. Okay the performance of this chip. So these chips, the Snapdragon X Elite and the Snapdragon X Plus, they're both supposedly awesome, but we've only seen it with synthetic benchmarks and stuff that the companies have demoed with intent. The real question, and really think the only kind of potential problem that we might see with this product is the support for non-native apps. So if you're new to this whole conversation of like ARM chips with Windows devices, all the stuff seems good so far, right? But the one weakness is a lot of Windows apps do not have native support for this type of chip, these ARM chips. And we've been promised from the developers, from Microsoft, from Qualcomm, that this time around, they, they've got it. They've got it all covered. The emulation will be good, everything will be solid, but I need to see the performance with my own eyes on retail units. None of this like early access stuff. Uh, the other product from Microsoft is their Surface Pro 11. So this now has an OLED screen, which looks quite a bit better than what they had previously because it's OLED. The size seemed the same and same with the bezels. They didn't change it. It's a good thing. I think with a tablet, you need to have a good amount of bezels. So you're not like accidentally misclicking when you're holding it as a tablet. Most of this device seemed completely unchanged from the exterior. It still has the same clean design on the back and you still have easy access to the SSD by pushing the metal plate that has magnets holding it. Now at the time of shooting this, I don't have specific pricing on any of those Microsoft Surface devices. I was told that they'd be cheaper than I would expect, but because of the live event, I'll be updating any kind of pricing and extra details down in the description. But I do think that they'll be cheaper than before. But I do have two other devices that I think are arguably more interesting. And I do have details and pricing. The first one is this one. This is Lenovo's Yoga Slim 7X. And this thing starts at $1,200. And for the money, you get a crazy amount of awesomeness in a laptop. So this is a full metal design, like classic yoga build, right? But the keyboard is just, it's awesome. This is a 1.5 millimeter travel. It's strangely responsive, but because this is so thin, like look at this thing, man. This is 1.29 millimeters thin. Sorry, 1.29 centimeters thin, so 12.9 millimeters. 
it's super thin, super light at 1.29 kilos. And it's like, <laughs> it, it's crazy how compact this thing is with a 14 inch screen. So this is a 14.5 inch OLED panel that gets super bright. I think it peaks at a thousand nits. This is all like pre-release or pre-retail soft or hardware. So I can't really, uh, I don't want to measure it and give you numbers, but the, the goal of it is be able to hit a thousand nits at peak. But this thing is so good for the money because typically if you're going to get a device like this with an Intel or AMD chip, this thing would have been like 1500 bucks easy, but to get this kind of performance and a 70 watt hour battery. So the 70 watt hour battery combined with the Snapdragon X chip, my guess, they wouldn't give me numbers yet, but my guess is going to be like a 20 hour claimed battery. This is supposed to be a multi-day battery product. Uh, I legit think they're going to be like, this thing's 21 hours like out of the box. That would be crazy. But again, all the testing has to come later, but for the money, I think this is really solid. The other product I want to draw your attention to is the VivaBook S15 from Asus. This is an even cheaper device, starts at $1,100, but this has a bigger screen at 15 inches. It's also a really nice looking panel, 120 hertz, 3K, but this isn't as premium of a product overall as the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X. I do think that because of the bigger screen, you'll also have a slightly shorter battery life. They both have 70 watt hour batteries, but the interesting thing about this Asus product, the VivaBook S15, is it does have the highest wattage of the Snapdragon X laptops I've seen so far. So 45 watts at the top end. You also get a lot of IO, including two USB-A and an HDMI port and a micro SD reader to boot. So my initial impression on this whole like launch of Snapdragon X devices, it's just so much better than I, than I thought it would be. Like when they first announced it, we saw all the launch partners and it seemed like, okay, there's a lot of companies on board, but I'm impressed by the caliber of devices that are coming out. The fact that Microsoft like retooled their Surface laptop hardware finally, but for ARM devices, like that's telling. Uh, and then you just saw like two other really good devices. Like I think the, the options are really good for consumers at this point. Don't go out and buy it until you see the retail like reviews. I, mean, I think my hope is that the emulation is gonna be good enough. It, it better be or else all of this is just gonna go to waste. But wait for the reviews. Uh, I'll be doing pretty extensive reviews on the performance and the stuff. So be tuned for that if you're interested. Uh, but there you have it. The Snapdragon X laptops are finally here.